What's going on guys? This is David from CoverProgrammer.com and today we have an awesome topic for you guys which is becoming a backend developer in 2021. Now, this, is, this video is going to be jagged with a ton of value. So with that said, let's get started. All right. So before we begin, it's time to focus. So please, please make sure that your phone is turned off. Just throw it away to the other side of the room. And why don't we just jump right in? I'll tell you why. You haven't smashed that like button just yet. It's time. I'll wait. You done it? Okay, let's get started. So, becoming a backend developer in 2021. Let's first talk about the basic skills that you will need to become a backend developer. All right. So, you definitely need a proficient knowledge in a backend programming language or framework or something. Um, you will need the ability to manage and host an environment full of application and database and administration and all that stuff. You will also need to understand a bit of a front end. So HTML, CSS and JavaScript is your friend this time. You will also need to have a bit of experience with uh, Git version control or any other type of version control and the knowledge and the accessibility and security and compliance. All right, so I know this is why you came here for, let's discuss how much a backend developer actually makes. Um, so how much does a backend developer make in the United States? So according to Indeed.com, the average base salary of a backend developer is a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars actually even more sometimes now this is just the average it can peak out further usually the cash bonus is an additional 4k all right so uh according to another website this is actually seventy five thousand uh, dollars per year um but we have Glassdoor as well, which says $100,000 plus. So we can confidently say that a backend developer usually makes enough to not go bankrupt <laughs> uh, easily. All right. Usually like over six figures. So uh, let's talk about the opportunity to become a backend developer in 2021. Now, Let's take a look at a couple of websites <clears throat> uh, of all the opportunities. So first up, uh, here we got Glassdoor.com. Now Glassdoor.com alone has almost 4,000 uh, backend job listings all alone. And we haven't talked about any other sites yet. Let's take a look at it. So Indeed.com has an additional 5,000 and 500 plus jobs as a backend developer just in the United States. So I think this is a huge, huge opportunity for everybody uh, out there who wants to become a programmer, a developer, especially a backend developer. So with that said, let's dive into the meat and the potatoes. All right, so uh, you definitely need to understand and learn the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because <clears throat> it is what it is. Next up, let's actually learn a programming language. Um, you can choose JavaScript, Python, PHP, not recommended though, Java, C Sharp, and Go as well. Now, I just told you like six different programming languages. You might be like, oh my God, which one do I choose? Uh, so let's actually take a look at the surveys and all that stuff. So according to the Stack Overflow Developer Sur Survey 2020, the most wanted programming language is Python. Next up, JavaScript. And uh, on the third place, there is Go. So these are the programming languages to go for. <laughs> and let's actually take a look at the top two. Uh, so Python versus JavaScript. Um, Quickly, 
So JavaScript is front end and back end, so JavaScript for the win. But why? Uh, let's take a look at that. So what can you actually do with JavaScript? You can build web apps, like progressive web apps. There is a React, which is an awesome framework. Next up, we got React Native. So if you know already React, you can actually go ahead and build native mobile apps with React Native. And you can, of course, create server-side applications. Uh, that's why we got Node.js. All right, now <clears throat> let's take a look at where can you, like, this is good, but where can you learn all these? On this channel, we have a ton of devel uh, development crash courses. On YouTube, we got the eight-hour JavaScript course. We got the React Tutorial 2021. We got Mern Stack Tutorial 2021. We got HTML courses, CSS courses, Python courses. We got everything on this channel. So make sure you check it out. Go ahead, subscribe right now. I'll wait just a sec so you don't miss out anything. Okay, subscribe, hit the bell. Good. Let's go. So uh, let's learn the backend framework. Now, what the heck is that? <laughs> so which framework to choose? Actually, let, let's go that way. Like this is Node.js that you want to go with uh, or the other uh, other frameworks, which are awesome, are Django, ASP.NET Core, Flask, Express, Spring and Ruby on the Rails. And actually, the framework is depends on the language that you actually choose. So for Let's go back. <clears throat> so Node.js is actually the JavaScript backend runtime. And for that, the best framework to choose is Express. Now for Java, it is Spring. For Ruby, it is Ruby on the Rails. For Python, it is Django or Flask, right? So this is just an image. Uh, yeah, this is like a visual expression. And of course we got a PHP with Laravel. Awesome. Let's take a step uh, step ahead. We got Git and GitHub. We have videos coming up explaining what's the difference between the two. Uh, but we also have a Git 101 already on this uh, channel by Amanath and me, myself. So let's actually take a look at what, what's that two things. So Git is actually like Doctor Strange from the Marvel world. Um, this is like a time machine for programmers. This is actually a tool that helps you guys to become better developers in faster times and you can just easily... This is a great tool for developers. All right, so what's the difference between the two? So GitHub is actually up on the cloud. Git is on your local machine. So you're tracking version on your machine and then you upload it to GitHub. Well, how does it look like? All right. So you get the master branch, uh, <clears throat> which might sound uh, confusing at first, but basically that's the version of the application. Actually, right now it is called main. So that's the branch that is actually on production, which is uh, released. Now you are branching out and you're building a big feature or smaller features and those are like separate branches so in case you have a bug it's not it's not going out to production all right and once you have a stable working awesome feature to your application you do this which is called the git merge and looks some, something like that <laughs> all right next up let's talk databases and data so there are two main types of databases. The first one is SQL. And the, one of the most uh, popular SQL databases is PostgreSQL. And then we got Oracle, we got MySQL. This is an awesome. Let's take a look at uh, NoSQL databases. And the most popular is actually MongoDB. Now let's take a look at what's the difference. So a SQL database is actually relational and in NoSQL database, there is no relation between uh, values. You can store graphs in a document, column, all that stuff. So NoSQL has less rules. And for that, it has a couple of advantages and disadvantages compared to SQL. 
Now, this is a couple of uses of NoSQL and SQL databases. So for no, NoSQL is awesome for gaming, social media, IoT, web, enterprise, all that stuff. Now, SQL is actually <clears throat> awesome for data marts, enterprise again, mobile, web, and all that crazy stuff. So actually, let's take a look at what NoSQL database is. So it's a highly scalable, highly available, very, very fast, easily uh, re replicatable and big data capable uh, database. Now, we got a ton of tutorials how to use MongoDB on this uh, channel. So make sure that you go ahead and check out those if you haven't done that already. And <clears throat> actually, this is my... This is my Instagram handle. Go ahead, drop me a message if there is something that you need further details on. But with that said, let's go further. Now we got Firebase. What is Firebase and why is it so useful as a backend developer? Let's take a look at that. So first up, uh, you can operate Firebase super, super easily with JavaScript. All right. <clears throat> Now we got Firebase hosting, which allows you to host your application online and they, they give you a preview link as well. So it's super, super easy. We got F Cloud Firestore, which is actually a real time database. Now, why is that good? Super fast. Your application works without reloading and all that stuff. Super awesome. Make sure to check it out. Cloud Firestore is amazing and and the guys over at Google who actually own Firebase, they took the good parts of SQL databases. They took the good part of NoSQL databases. They merged them and that's what Firestore is. It is a hybrid of SQL and NoSQL databases. This is super, super awesome. We got a ton of tutorial with that and we have a lot of stuff coming up we where we are using firebase firestore so make sure you hit that subscribe button because we got so much more awesomeness coming on this channel all right you can also authenticate users using firebase with a couple line, lines of code because firebase is all about making developers life super easy it's actually think of it as like aws but with less pain in the head Super easy to set up, super easy to work with, and you got the full Google uh, infrastructure behind your back and behind your applications back. So this is this is so much so amazing. You can also uh, host Node.js functions using Firebase, the cloud functions. So you can actually build a serverless architecture using Firebase. Now, you also get storage for media and all that stuff that you want to go ahead and store <clears throat> in your application. And you also get Google Analytics for Firebase. And you also get the Firebase Test Lab. So Firebase is super, super amazing. And it should be the best friend of each and every single developer. Now, what's the best part about Firebase? It is free for a super, super generous limit. Now, actually, this video is not sponsored by Firebase. Opportunity for Firebase, though. This video is not sponsored by Firebase by any means. However, because we want you guys to use the best of your time and to actually be successful as developers, we highly, highly recommend using Firebase. We use it in a ton of applications in our own team at Clever Programmer, and we've built a ton of tutorials. So make sure to check those out because that's how you actually see how powerful Firebase is. And you can also go ahead, check out the pricing. Uh, this is, they are super generous with all that and boom, easy as that. All right, let's talk Node.js. APIs, JavaScript. So let's actually talk APIs. So first up, let's take a look at this uh, thing. And I might, uh, and I might move myself. Uh, let's stay here. So, what is an API first? An API. Let's actually go ahead and and uh, go this way. So 
uh, you, the user, you want to know what's the weather like in Los Angeles. Now, you go to somewhere, uh, some weather sort of website, and you're actually interested in the weather. So you that that is your input. That way, you actually express your interest in the weather. Now, that website goes ahead and makes an API call to the backend, also known as the server. Now, the server goes ahead and starts calculating and all that stuff and looks into the database and super awesome stuff, but then responds to the front end and tells you that it is 51 degrees right now. Might be not accurate at the moment when you're watching this, but at that moment, it was 51 degrees. Now, the front end actually outputs it, like make, shows it on the screen. So basically, this is a workflow of the API. So this is the communication channel between the front end and the back end. Nas, Frankie, and Daniel uh, from Clever Programmer made an awesome video explaining how the whole back end uh, how the whole API infrastructure works. So make sure to check that out too. It is a couple minute long video, but it makes so much sense and explains super awesome. All right, next up, let's take a look at this uh, image as well. This is another representation of how an API works. Basically, the application makes a request to the backend and the channel that they use to communicate is the API. It's kind of like you go in at a restaurant, make an order, then the waiter is actually the API who takes the order to the kitchen, brings back the pizza for you and delivers it to your table. We also have GraphQL uh, databases, but in this tutorial, we are not going to dive deep into that. Now let's talk DevOps, mind blowing. So what is DevOps? It's basically planning, building, continuous integration, deployment, operation, continuous feedback. There is a ton I mean a ton of applications and tools that you can use to maximize your DevOps. Now, let's take a look at what, what is this continuous integration, uh, which is the main part of DevOps. It's basically your code, your coding, you're testing, you're analyzing your code, you're tracking the version and you release all the time. So basically it is a continuous flow when you're making new stuff, making new features, and you're always hitting that deploy and host button. So super awesome thing. Make sure to check those out and go into details. But we will have more and more um, tutorials on how to understand all this stuff and how to use all these technologies. Now, one of the most uh, requested and, and most useful uh, application when it comes to DevOps and maintenance and all that stuff is docker now docker has a ton of use a ton of ways you can actually utilize it i'm going to show you guys one of them so let's actually go ahead and imagine that you want to deploy a react version 16 application a react version 17 application a node.js which uses uh yeah, Node.js, which uses the 12th version of Node. And you want to actually uh, deploy a Python uh, version 3.9 application and a Perfect, which is the backend side of Swift. Now you want to install all these on one server because buying a new server is super expensive. Provisioning a new one, so much hassle. You have only one server, you want to deploy all these. Now, we all know that all these applications has, have a ton of dependencies. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, node modules, that's all the dependencies. So, so much stuff. And if you install all of them on one server, all the dependencies will be like, oh my God. Now, this is mainly because we got React 16th version and React 17th version. And it will just mess up the whole thing because if even if the others will be okay next to each other, these two will definitely conflict and cause something like that on the server. Um, now for that, Docker introduced the containerized environment, which means 
it creates separate environments for all the applications without running a virtual machine. So how, do, how does it look like? You have one server, but then you have a several little bits and pieces which are full applications. Look at it that way. That's all for Docker. You probably won't need it too much, but in case you do, this is a go-to understanding of how you can actually use this. Now, let's take a look at the top hosting platforms. First up, we got Netlify. It is free to use for some extent, but this is an awesome tool to host your applications, React applications, all that websites. You also have Firebase hosting, which is just a couple of commands on the terminal. It's so worth it. And it is free for a super generous extent. And we also have AWS, which is very, very heavy. And this is for like super pro users, but AWS is awesome. We are not against it, but we always suggest here at Clever Programmer that try to use Firebase as much as you can. And if Firebase is not enough, then move to AWS because Firebase is so much easier to set up, so much easier to work with and maintain. Now, how can, where can you actually learn all this stuff? You can go ahead and search it up on YouTube, YouTube and YouTube. You can also join Discord servers. Go ahead, join Facebook groups, LinkedIn, whatever. Basically join a community. But most recommended YouTube they show you, they actually talk during the videos. So it's super easy to learn that way. Let's do a quick recap. Uh, so first, what do you need to know? What do you need to do to become a backend developer in 2021? Go ahead, pick a language, Python, JavaScript, Java, whichever you want to. Learn a framework, Django, Express.js, Spring, all that stuff. Learn Git and GitHub and how to use all these things. And learn a SQL or a NoSQL database because those are actually the most uh, common ways that today we uh, store data. Also learn about APIs and GraphQL. GraphQL is less important for now, but make sure to learn about that. And with that said, thank you so much for joining. I hope you are going to have an awesome holiday season this year in 2020 and you can finish off 2021 super hard. And with that said, go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, hit that ring so you don't miss any of our videos coming up next in this uh in this year because we are all about helping you to become and get a job as a developer in 2021 and beyond and onwards so with that said thank you so much for joining i wish you a happy holidays and an awesome new year and i'll see you in the next video peace <laughs>